Thomas Fitzsimons was an Irishman who came from Ireland to Philadelphia in the middle portion of the 1700s. He was vehemently anti-English, and that's one reason why he excitedly joined the American cause, because it would give him a way of attacking his native homeland's oppressors. My name is Dr. Daniel Rolfe. I'm an historian here at the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. Thomas Fitzsimons was referred to as the forgotten man of the revolution. My name is Florinda Delp. I am the granddaughter of Giuseppe Donato, the sculptor commissioned to do the statue of Thomas Fitzsimons, and my cousin posed with the uniform of the colonial army. It's a rather imposing statue. It's, it's grand in height, but the position of his hands and the way he's holding the quill in his hands are very delicate and almost poetic. It shows a gracefulness and it shows, I guess, a commitment to what he was signing, the Constitution of the United States. This statue of Thomas Fitzsimons was donated by the Friendly Sons of St. Patrick, which is still in existence, even though it was created back in 1771 by Thomas Fitzsimons himself. My grandfather had completed it in 1941. He was a purist, a purist in the sense that when the sculptures were done and cast in bronze, they should be left alone to, to patronize by the environment. I mean, my grandfather wasn't against cleaning it. He was against taking the, the patina away. We often think that bronze is a very stable material because it's very, very durable. However, just like any type of metal, it is susceptible to corrosion or rusting. Our goal is to achieve a healthy state for an outdoor bronze sculpture without it looking like it's brand new. I'm John Carr of Materials Conservation Collaborative in Philadelphia, and I worked on the sculpture that you see to the north of Thomas Fitzsimons. Don Diego de Guirdequay by Luis Antonio Sanguino. It was a gift of the Spanish government in 1976 to commemorate the bicentennial of the United States. During the Revolutionary War against the British, there were individuals in Spain who supplied weapons, cannons, powders, bullets, tents, uniforms for the American cause. Don Diego came to the United States in 1785 as an ambassador from Spain in order to work out an agreement with the United States since the United States was broke. The condition of the Don Diego sculpture required maintenance because it was observed that there was some advanced corrosion and the granite base was in a deplorable condition. For a bronze, just like any other metal, to be healthy, it really needs a protective coating. The surface of the bronze sculpture is heated with torches and then wax is applied with brushes. Uh, once the wax cools, then it is buffed with soft cotton rags. There were no records left by the sculpture on what the intended patination or color of the sculpture should be. Using a gantry, which is a lift, we were able to load it onto a truck and bring it back to our studio. We found a small area of the surface of the bronze that had been protected by the granite base. This area had the original color and the wax protection which then informed us on how we were to finish the bronze and achieve the color that it is today. Well, it's interesting with the two statues here on Logan Square that Don Diego had laid the foundation for St. Peter's Catholic Church, the first oldest Catholic church in New York City. And Fitzsimons, of course, was also a member of Congress. And since they were both Catholics, it's very conceivable that they may have met one another at Mass. The sculpture of Don Diego is very modern in the sense that the sculptor took a lot of liberties with the proportions of the hands, the proportions of the man's head. And when you compare the sculpture of Don Diego to Thomas Fitzsimons, you can see this difference. Thomas Fitzsimons is very classical and all of the clothing and wardrobe is very represented in an accurate way where there's a lot more liberal handling of the sculpture of Don Diego.